Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and today we're going to be exploring guiding graphs, how to read them, the information we get from them, and setting realistic guiding expectations. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Now let's jump on in and explore guiding graphs. Let's explore guiding graphs and how to read them. Understanding what's going on is essential in order to diagnose what's happening when something goes wrong. Guiding is utilizing a camera and special software such as PHD2 to lock onto a star we call the guide star. As our telescope tracks across the night sky, imperfections in polar alignment and or tracking cause our target to come out of center and or drift away altogether. Guiding uses the camera and specialized software to correct for this by monitoring the chosen guide star and implementing small correction commands to the mount in order to keep the guide star centered. In turn, this keeps our target centered. Here we have two lines, a red line and a blue line. The blue line represents the RA axis and the red line represents the declination axis. As these two lines move up and down, these movements represent the motion of the guide star as your guiding software monitors the guide star's current position in relation to its original starting point. After the guide star moves a specified amount of distance, the guiding software will issue a command for the affected axis in the opposite direction of the movement in order to return the guide star to its original starting position. If you're using PHD2, the average motion of each axis or RMS can be seen and monitored in the guide stats window. You can open this window for viewing by going to view and then clicking on display stats. In the guide stats window, you'll see your RMS for RA, declination, and total RMS with some numbers next to each one. The numbers we want to pay attention to are in parentheses and these numbers show us our arc seconds per pixel error, and this is a direct correlation to the graph we just went over. This is where we need to separate expectation versus realistic performance. There's a number of variables that can affect this, including, but not limited to, sky conditions, balance, equipment capability, focus, etc. So what is good guiding? How do we know the numbers we're seeing here will give us our best results? Let's face it, we all want to have the lowest total RMS possible. We see various scenarios where people are getting 0.3 to 0.5 arc seconds per pixel. As amazing as that is, make sure your expectations meet the realistic ability of your equipment. So what's good? What should we expect and when should we worry? Now what I'm about to tell you, I'm speaking from my own research and personal experience with my equipment and have consistently received good results with the expectation I'm about to show you. I'm interested though if any of you have had experience that shows against this, so please throw a comment below and let us know. Let's get as much information into the community as we can. First, let's take a look at my Skywatcher 200P in the field of view calculator in astronomy.tools. You can see that it has a resolution capability of 0.97 arc seconds per pixel with the ASI 2600 camera strapped to it. This information tells me that my goal is to have a total RMS less than 0.97 arc seconds per pixel. Over this is when I start getting elongated or egg shaped stars. Anything under 0.97 arc seconds per pixel is working well in my favor at this point and how far under I can get is determined by my realistic equipment capability. We can also fine tune your equipment performance when it comes to guiding, which deserves a full video all to itself, so stay tuned. Also, keep in mind from earlier that many factors can affect this number, including your equipment capability, your sky conditions, etc. Also, the more weight you pack onto your mount, the more this number will be affected as well. Now, let's dive into the less attractive subject, but critical to understand in order to fix as well as improve your overall guiding experience. What do we do when things don't quite go as planned? The guiding graph will tell you information you need when things go wrong and knowing what it's telling you will assist in correcting and getting you back to imaging. But diagnosing guiding graphs can be a pretty lengthy subject, so that's best suited for a video of its own. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss out on Wednesday's episode where we're going to be diving into diagnosing guiding graphs and getting you corrected if you have any issues. 
So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any useful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? What questions do you have? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.